So I'd like to talk this week about Diane Abbott. Now, full disclosure, she's my MP, so she's been on the receiving end of a lot of letters from me over the last couple of decades, you'll be unsurprised to hear. And she's always written back, and I've had various meetings with her in her constituency office, sometimes about local issues, sometimes about issues that I would like her to raise in Parliament. I've also met her at campaigning events, and I think on one occasion she read out a part of a letter that I wrote her in the Commons. Uh, which is great during the debate on that subject. Um, Now, before I say anything else about her, let me recommend a podcast, which is not really my usual fare on here, but I've been listening to a tortoise podcast called Who Trolled Amber? And you can get it for free if you, like, get the subscription and then cancel it quickly once you've listened to it. Um, Or I think the first few episodes are available for free if you want to then see if you feel like listening to the rest. And it's about the impact that the media had on the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp case. And I think it's really, really interesting. I mean, it's also about what drives social media um, trolling and things like that. It, generally, it's an interesting podcast if you're into that sort of thing, finding stuff out about how our world works around us. But in particular, it does address the impact that the shifting media narrative had on the court case, had on Amber's career and work and reputation, but also the impact that that stuff had on public opinion. You know, and I remember at the time of the court case, all kinds of people who I consider pretty smart and pretty sensible and whose opinions I generally value and respect, coming up with stuff that I absolutely knew was false, stuff that I absolutely could see was unfair and biased, you know, picking up on, on like unpleasantries around the situation and this kind of, oh, they're both as bad as each other nonsense. And it was frightening to, to sort of see how powerful social media and the published media are when it comes to shaping what we sort of generally accept to be true. And that brings me back to Diane Abbott. Because when I talk to friends of mine about Diane Abbott, very often the first things that come up are, uh, did she drink a mojito on a train? Okay. Um, Did she get some numbers wrong in an interview talking about social housing? And then thirdly, is she horrendously anti-Semitic? Um, And the answers to those questions are, one, yes, she drank a mojito on a train, and that was a bit naughty. And two, yes, she seems to have got some numbers wrong in an interview, but then she published the corrected numbers immediately and said that she'd been feeling unwell that day. Doesn't strike me as outrageous. And is she horrendously anti-Semitic? No, she's not. She wrote an article in which she was trying to distinguish between anti-Semitism and other forms of racism because every form of racism and every form of discrimination has its own unique characteristics and she was trying to make a point about the different ways in which they might interact and and be expressed and when she realised that it had read wrong and it had sounded bad she immediately apologised and retracted what she'd said as a result that's why she no longer has the Labour whip and Keir Starmer has never restored it. Um, Interesting that those are the first things everyone seems to know about, aren't they? Because here's some other things that she's done. She opposed the war in Iraq. She opposed the war in Afghanistan. She called for us to be accepting more refugees from Afghanistan when we realised what a mess we had made over there and how many people's lives were in very serious danger. She has called for peace and for de-escalation of the situation in Ukraine and she's been calling for a ceasefire in Gaza from the very, very beginning and shouting about how important and vital it is that we protect human life in the region. She has also done a bunch of other things that put her on the right side of history. She voted for gay marriage. She has tabled amendments that would extend the Abortion Act Um, to Northern Ireland. She has done lots of stuff supporting women's rights. She opposed the horrific way in which Windrush people were treated when the government's whole Windrush scandal suddenly kicked in. She's been arguing their case for a very long time. She's been fighting against racism and sexism for years and years and years. 
Now all of these things came to something of a head last week when Frank Hester, the Conservative Party's top donor, who's donated more than £10 million to the Conservative Party under Rishi Sunak, but who has also profited from more than £400 million of contracts handed to him by the Conservative government, said comments that weren't like they could be construed as being racist in a certain... These were actively talking about her death, about her being murdered, and overtly racist and overtly misogynist, suggesting that, that he had a hatred for black women generally. I mean, unbelievable. And then in response to this, various people raised questions, and Diane herself wasn't given the opportunity to even ask the Prime Minister a single question about this in Parliament. How can it possibly be that we are still allowing the media to tell us what is important in terms of, of what goes on? Let's talk about the extremism that is going on right now in government. And it is Rishi Sunak, it is Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House, it is Keir Starmer, it is all of these people refusing to clearly stand up for Diane Abbott, refusing to give her the opportunity to talk about her own experiences, and all of them simultaneously refusing to call for a ceasefire and to withdraw British weapons from a situation that is killing thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and a situation which Diane Abbott has been on the right side of from the beginning. Let's talk about credit where credit's due. And I know that Starmer has called for the £10 million to be returned to Frank Hester, but I don't think we should be giving this guy £10 million. I think we should be donating that money to causes close to Diane Abbott's heart of her own choosing. And I think what the government should be withdrawing from Frank Hester is the £400 million worth of contracts that he has been profiting from. Because do not believe for a second that he donated to the Conservative Party out of magnanimous goodwill. Because just look at the numbers. Of course that's not what's going on. And that's what the media should be focused on rather than whether Diane Abbott has drunk a mojito on a train. Because I think we've all drunk a mojito on a train, but I'm pretty clear that none of us have accepted five, 400 million pounds worth of contracts and then dished out a 10 million pound donation to the Tory party. That should be the scandal. And we've got to s start thinking about the way that the media direct what the issues are and what people's attention is focused on. And we've got to start asking, is this fair? And is the media itself, in fact, wildly racist and sexist? And if so, isn't it time we switched it off and started looking somewhere else? On which note, thanks as ever to the sponsors who make it possible for me to make this sort of content. See you next week. Increasingly, the mainstream media is terrible at informing the public of what is really going on. I'm only able to make these videos because people are generous enough to sponsor me making them and if you're able to be a part of that I would hugely appreciate it. It can cost as little as one dollar a month and you'll get loads of fun bonus content and lots of extras from me and my undying gratitude. I also massively appreciate it if you're able to like, share these videos and let people out there know what's going on.